What's up, 31 fam? How you doing, horror homies? Welcome back to Horror News Today over here at Horror 31 with your boy, Punk Rock Dad. I hope you're all having a great day, everyone. Um, man, it's been a wild couple of weeks. <sighs> Y'all ready to talk some horror stuff, man? I'm very excited. So, this is probably going to be a long video. I did a little bit of poking around before I... Uh, Got ready to film and I was like, oh my goodness, there's a lot of topics to cover. So, let's jump right in and get started. Before we go any further, if you don't mind, um, leave me a comment. Let me know what you're thinking about the topics that we cover. Please like the video and if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers so that I can get to do live streams. I really enjoy live streams and my other channel has quite a few. We've got like 8,100 subscribers which is really amazing but i want to grow the horror stuff just as well so if you don't mind and you like what we're doing over here that would be very much appreciated um i almost said i have a horror channel that i started good <laughs> links in the description <laughs> oh i'm tired um anyways so the first thing we're going to cover this week is a new shutter exclusive i personally <clears throat> pardon me really love shutter it's my favorite streaming service by a wide margin there's so much stuff on there that I haven't ever seen, and there's so many things that I've seen, but they're nowhere else to be found on a streaming service. So I really like that Shutter brings us some of the deep cuts. Um, but the oh, and just full disclosure here, I utilize BloodyDisgusting.com a lot, and then a couple of other websites to get most of my news. So if you're wondering where a lot of this is coming from, check out Bloody Disgusting. Support that website. Um, I'm not. I'm just bringing you guys horror news in case you don't feel like going and reading stuff. But uh, this is just my way of having a great time. So the uh, headline says, Shutter heads to an isolated house on a remote island with Irish horror movie Caveat. Announced today on May the 4th, Damian McCarthy's feature debut Caveat has been acquired by Shutter. Uh, with the horror movie set to arrive on the streaming service June 3rd of 2021. I can't wait because I love exclusive movies like this because you find gems more often than not, at least in my opinion anyways. Ben Kaplan from Band of Brothers and Call the Midwife, Jonathan French from A Soldier's Voice, and Leela Sykes from Missing Something star in the movie written and directed by McCarthy. Lone Drifter Isaac accepts a job to look after his landlord's niece, Olga, for a few days in an isolated house on a remote island. It seems like easy money, but there's a catch. He must wear a leather harness and chain that restricts his movements to certain rooms. What? <laughs> Once Olga's uncle, Barrett, leaves the two of them alone, a game of cat and mouse ensues as, Olga's, as Olga displays increasingly erratic behavior as a trapped Isaac makes a series of horrific discoveries in the house. I'm interested in this. Shutter teases. With slow building tension, Caveat balances creepy interiors with the beauty of Cork's countryside to stunning visual effect. Playing out like a thoughtful, long-lost 80s chiller, Caveat leads the audience on a path of twists and turns to an unforgettable resolution. Oh man, I'm interested in this. This sounds way more fun than I thought it sounded at the beginning. I read it first and was like, that sounds kind of cool. I read it out loud and I was like, nah, that sounds dope. Chaining some dude up and being like, now we're going to play hide and seek, but I got a knife. I think that sounds amazing. <laughs> dude, Shutter's so great. I love that service. I just got back in touch with AMC and I, I got approved for press so I can get back to doing uh, shutter screeners and reviews. So you'll see some uh, reviews before the movie comes out finally with some new stuff coming in the near future. So let's see here. Ooh, huge year for horror teased in USA Today's massive summer preview with photos. Let's see what they got. Oh my good lord, this is a lot of... Okay, so here's... Okay. USA Today went ham with their summer movie preview that we've been picking through all morning. There's still more. <laughs> here's a collection of all the major horror happenings this summer, and what we've learned is that there's no shortage of movies to look forward to. Dude, no kidding. No kidding. All right, let's start. Okay, so... 
Okay, so we're going to talk about some new stuff that's coming out. Um, well, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to tell you some of the movies that are coming out. And uh, we'll see if anything's tickling your fancy. We've got Army of the Dead coming out May 14th in theaters and May 21st on Netflix. I'm super pumped for that one. And that Zack Snyder, I can't wait for that movie. That movie looks awesome. It looks like, I don't know, some kind of Schwarzenegger action flick, but with zombies. I, I like that kind of stuff. And it's, it's all, a lot of times it's cheesy, but I'm interested. There's a movie called The Gin. Let's see if we can find some information on that. It's on VOD. Let's see. The Gin 2021 film. Here we go. Okay. So we go to IMDb. I hate IMDb, man. I, I don't I don't like that side at all. Whatever, it is what it is. Alright. A mute boy becomes trapped in his apartment with a sinister monster after making a wish to fulfill his heart's greatest desire. Well, there's a trailer if you want to watch it. I'm not putting trailers in my videos because they tend to block them that way, which is stupid. You'd think they would like to get promoted, but I guess not. I guess not. Alright, then we got Spiral from the Book of Saw, May 14th in theaters. We all know what that's about, and I would imagine we all want to see that. I know I, for one, am super excited for that movie. As a matter of fact, I'm probably going to go see it with Josh. Then we've got Dementia Part 2, May 21st in theaters, June 1st on VOD. What is this? Dementia Part 2. All right, let's find out about this one. Wendell receives a threatening phone call from his parole officer, Reggie. If he doesn't find a job immediately, he'll face serious legal repercussions. Wendell wrangles some home maintenance work for a seemingly benign older woman, Suzanne, who persists in giving him increasingly absurd tasks to complete around the house. Sounds like a good time. As the workday progresses, Wendell is thrown into an ever-escalating nightmare and comes face-to-face -face with an unexpected evil. Evil. Suzanne hides a dark secret, and it's up to Wendell and Suzanne's daughter, Sheila, to put an end to her madness. <laughs> I don't know. Sounds cool. It looks like it's in black and white. That's kind of dope. I'm interested. I like it, dude. I, I mean, they filmed it a long time ago. Let's see here. That's cool, man. Cool. We've got Seance coming out on May 21st in theaters and VOD. All right, let's find out about Seance, dude. This is this is getting more fun. I'm liking this. I like this list of stuff. We just kind of start looking and. Find out what we've got going on in the stuff. Okay. Camille Meadows is the new girl at the prestigious Edelwein Academy for Girls. Soon after her arrival, six friends invite her to join them at a late night ritual. That sounds like a terrible idea. What are you doing, guys? Or gals? Calling forth the spirit of a dead former student who reportedly haunts the halls. But before morning, one of the girls is dead, leaving the others wondering what they may have awakened. All right, look, dude. This was directed by Simon Barrett. Doesn't even tell you who stars in the movie. Must be a bunch of youngsters. Uh, this dude, this sounds like a movie I've already seen. Like literally, like exactly the same movie. Is this not already on Shutter or something? I don't know. I don't know. We're soon to find out, though. I tell you what. I tell you what. Ghost Lab comes out May 26th on Netflix. Let's see what Ghost Lab's about. You know what I just watched? Um, I'm going to do a, a review on it. I watched a movie called The Divide. It came out like 10 years ago. Just heard about it. I watched it on Tubi. I'm also doing a top 10 on Tubi list pretty soon. Like this week. Um, that movie's. You know what? I'm just going to tell you later. Watch my review, please. <laughs> that was so rude. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it to sound like a jerk. It just came off like a jerk, didn't it? Ghost Lab! After witnessing a haunting in their hospital, two doctors become dangerously obsessed with obtaining scientific proof that ghosts exist. All right. Okay. So this is a is this is this foreign? Pardon me. Excuse me. I didn't mean to. Oh, it says it's in Thai. That's cool. Thai horror. I'm interested in that. I like legitimately. I like foreign horror, specifically Asian stuff. We got Endangered Species coming out May 28th in theaters and VOD. Endangered Species is an intense, action-packed survival adventure horror movie about a wealthy American family who travel to the vast African wilderness of Kenya hoping for a dream vacation filled with excitement, bonding, and a chance to fix the growing rifts within their family. Honestly, pfft, sounds boring. 
You know what? I could, it's got Jerry O'Connell in it. Never mind, I'm in. Rebecca Romaine, she's all right. But Jerry O'Connell, I'm in, dude. That guy's so bad, he's good. So, never mind. <laughs> I'm in. Let's see here. There's probably like a, like a monster-ish movie. Like, remember that movie Crawl? That was a pretty good movie. It's maybe something kind of like that. Oh, dude. A Quiet Place Part 2 finally coming out on May 28th in theaters. That's a movie that I cannot wait to see. I had already bought tickets last year before COVID was like, hell nah, son. Then we've got The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, June 4th in theaters and HBO Max. I have never watched any of The Conjuring movies. I know, right? Oh, well. I don't know how to pronounce this, but it looks like it's called Gaia. June 18th in theaters. Let's see what it's about. Let's see what it's about. All right. On a surveillance mission in a primordial forest, a park ranger encounters two survivalists following a post-apocalyptic lifestyle. Cool. The boy and his philosophical father seem to have their own religion and a mysterious relationship to nature. <laughs> there are many suspicious aspects to their existence, but when the cabin is attacked, does have a cabin, it! When the cabin's attacked by a strange post-human beings one night, what? It's like post-hardcore, but it's post-humans? Interesting. She learns that there's a greater threat in this emergent wilderness. Gaia is an ecological horror fantasy which engages the burning issues of our time. Cool. I'm interested. I'll check that out. There, there are a lot of movies coming out. Good grief. Dude, we haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg of this, of this show yet. There's a movie called False Positive coming out June 25th on Hulu. And it's, I don't know what it's about. I'm not even going to get in there. Yo! Werewolves Within, July 25th. In theaters, July 2nd on VOD. Hold, what? That's, oh no, sorry. June 25th in theaters and July 2nd on VOD. Hold up, I think I know something about this movie. Let's find out. Uh, yes! This is directed by Josh Rubin. I did an interview with Josh Rubin on my other channel. I'll try to get it on this channel so you guys can check it out. I support this guy. He was so nice, man. He was such a cool guy. Um, I'm going to reach out and see if I can get another interview with him uh, when this movie's getting closer to release. You know what? I'm going to email him tomorrow. Why not? And see if he'll, if he'll talk with me again. He was so nice the first time. If he doesn't have time, it's okay. I understand. A snowstorm traps town residents together inside the local inn, where newly arrived forest ranger Finn and postal worker Cecily must try to keep the peace and uncover the truth behind a mysterious creature that has begun terrorizing the community. I love werewolf movies. I can't wait to watch this. This is going to be awesome. Directed by Josh Rubin. Super stoked. Based on the Werewolves Within by Red Storm Entertainment. Heck yeah. Dude, this could be great. I don't recognize... I recognize a one dude... Glenn Fleshler, uh, who plays a character in the movie, but the rest of the people... Oh, no, I know Milana Vaintra, but I, I know her. I recognize her. She looks like the... Is that the at t young lady? Wow, cool. I'm not familiar with Sh Sam Richardson or Cheyenne Jackson, but, dude, I, I really like um, Josh Rubin a lot, and I think that guy's extremely talented and very nice, so I'll be supporting this movie, and I would urge you to do the same, please. Please. I knew when I saw that, I was like, I think I know what that is. The Forever Purge is supposed to be like the last Purge movie, but it takes place after the Purge has been deemed illegal. I don't know. Purge was all right. Let Us In on July 2nd on VOD. Good grief. There's so many movies coming out. Let's see what we got here. I keep thinking Let Us In. I keep thinking Let Me In or Let the Right One In. Let's see. Bullied at school, neglected at home, and incredibly lonely. Oh, that's terrible. Twelve-year-old Owen spends his days plotting revenge <laughs> on his tormentors and spends his nights spying on other residents of the apartment complex he lives in. All right. His sole friend is Abby, played by Chloe Grace Moretz. Interesting. A strange girl who comes out only at nighttime. Both outcasts. The two from a, the two form a strong bond when Abby's caretaker disappears amid a series of gruesome murders. Owen begins to suspect that she is hiding a terrible secret. Wait, hold on, what? <laughs> I absolutely read Let Me In, even though I, I typed in Let Us In. It pulled in Let Me In. I don't know, but that was wild, dude. All right, let's see if I can find Let Us In. <laughs> All right, Let Us In. A rash of teenagers go missing in the small town, and one ostracized 12-year-old and her best friend step in to figure out what's going on. Alright, cool. I'll have to see a trailer for this one before I uh, 
decide. This one doesn't sound too interesting, but it's only like, dang, it's only 79 minutes. It says it's mostly sci-fi anyways. I don't know, that one doesn't sound very interesting to me. Now this one I'm interested in, I think it's Australian, it's called Great White. It's coming out on July 16th and then uh, in theaters and VOD. It's supposed to be a, obviously a shark movie, but I believe it's Australian. Let's, let's find out. All right. Yep, two great white sharks circle five passengers aboard a stranded seaplane miles from shore. That's a pretty uh, cool, interesting. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, let's see here. I don't recognize any of the folks. They look like they, let's see here. Where's, is it tell us where it's from? Okay. Yep, Australian. Great White is an upcoming Australian horror film. Cool. Shark movies are fun. If it's if it's somewhere in between Sharknado and Jaws, I'll be pretty psyched. I love Sharknado. <laughs> oh my goodness, there's so many movies coming out. This is ridiculous. The Night House comes out on July 16th. It just says, A widow begins to discover her recently deceased husband's disturbing secrets. Okay. Okay, okay. There's a trailer, so if you guys want to check out the Night House, let me know if it sounds interesting to you. I'll watch the trailer later, and we'll talk about it in the comments. Um, but, I mean, honestly, I like stuff like this. You know, when a widow starts to find out horrible things. I mean, it gets super uncomfortable and awkward. I like that kind of stuff. We got one called Rising Wolf. What if that was about a boner? Oh, I'm so immature. I'm sorry. That was stupid. <laughs> I'm still laughing, though. Rising Wolf, set in Shanghai and shot in Sydney. Interesting. Portrays a young environmentalist who wakes to find herself trapped and kidnapped in the elevator of a super high-rise building and at the mercy of her tormentors. That could be a claustrophobic type movie. I'm interested to check that out a little bit. Okay. Okay, you got me. You got my attention. Let's see here. There's a movie just called Old. It's a new movie, though. That's interesting. A thriller about a family on a tropical holiday who discover that the secluded beach where they are relaxing for a few hours is somehow causing them to age rapidly and reducing their entire lives into a single day. Yo, is this like the horror version of Benjamin Button? It's M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong? I'm interested in this. Let's do it. Hell yeah, son. I love M. Night Shyamalan. Dudes, I like his bad movies. I don't even care. That's cool. I didn't even know he had a new movie coming out. The Green Knight, July 30th. Let's find out what The Green Knight's all about, man. This, I love you guys so much. Thanks for hanging out with me. This is how you get your information, though, huh? Sometimes? No, not really. Hopefully that'll be the case. One of these days I'll be the guy that gives you your information. Oh, she's adorable. Erin Kellyman? I don't know who she is, but she's super... Oh, dude, Barry Kogan. Uh, this dude's in a lot of stuff that I watch. I used to not like him because of his face, but I like him now. Because of his face. It's very strange. The Green Knight, an epic fantasy adventure based on the timeless Arthurian legend. The Green Knight tells the story of Sir Gawain, King Arthur's reckless and headstrong nephew, who embarks on a daring quest to confront the eponymous Green Knight, a gigantic emerald-skinned stranger and tester of men. Bum, bum, bum. Gawain contends with ghosts, giants, thieves, and schemers in what becomes a deeper journey to define his character and prove his worth in the eyes of his family and kingdom by facing the ultimate challenger. From visionary filmmaker David Lowry comes a fresh and bold spin on a classic tale from the Knights of the Round Table. Rated R for graphic nudity, violence, and sexuality. I'm in. Let's do it. Um, interesting. It's two hours plus, dude. It's a long movie. I, this one might be the one I'm looking forward to the most at this point in time. This sounds awesome. I will check out a trailer and let you guys know what I think in the comments. Please let me know what you think. Dude, that sounds dope. I like fantasy stuff anyway. So we got one called Masquerade coming in. Oh, yeah. I heard about this one. This has got... Uh, oh, dang it. What's her name? What's her name? Bella Thorne's her name. Let's see. Okay. A young girl struggles to survive after a group of home invaders break into her house to steal her family's priceless artwork. All right, cool, man. I'm in, dude. Bella Thorne's dope, and home invasion movies are some of my favorite kind of horror movies. I like that they can they focus their time and energy and, and their money on on making things great because they're usually in one setting. They don't go all over the place with the movie. So, in my experiences and from what I understand about stuff like this, is when they have the opportunity to make a movie that is all in one setting, 
their money goes much further. At least that's what I, that's how I understand it anyway. Yeah, so I mean, I really enjoy movies like that. And home invasion movies are some of my favorites, so I'm interested in this one, for sure, for sure. My goodness. Blood Red Sky, July, Netflix. All right, let's find out what it's about. Blood Red Sky is an upcoming English-German action suspense horror film, good grief, written by Stefan Holtz and Peter Thorwarth, who is also the director of the film. A woman with a mysterious illness is forced into action when a group of terrorists attempt to hijack a transatlantic overnight flight. In order to protect her son, she will have to reveal a dark secret, unleash the inner monster she has fought to hide. Also known as Transatlantic 473. I don't know, man. That sounds very generic. Probably pretty boring. But who knows? It's on Netflix. You don't have to pay for it. Let's go watch it. The Last Matinee, August 6th in theaters, August 24th on VOD. All right. Now that sounds like something I would like to watch. Uruguayan horror film? What? Yes, I'm interested. I love foreign horror. You get to see what other people look. I like foreign horror because you get to see other people's and other... Uh, cultures take on say ghost stories or vampires or werewolves or home invasions or whatever i really like to see other people's renditions of stuff like one of my favorite movies ever is one cut of the dead bro i mean train to busan dude korean horror is some of my favorite asian horror and japanese horror specifically uh korean more thriller stuff japanese horror movies love them love them love them okay dude it says it's gore drenched Love. Hold up, man. Anna, a projectionist, takes over her father's night shift one evening in 1993. When a cinema-goer starts a bloody slaughter in a cinema hall, the young woman has to protect herself and the innocent guests. What? It's literally a horror movie set in a horror movie setting. What is happening? I'm into this. Yo, told you. I knew this was going to sound... I knew this sounded awesome. This doesn't sound like a horror movie, but whatever. I'm going to talk about it for a minute because it sounds... Because it's going to be great. The Suicide Squad, August 6th theaters and HBO Max. I'm talking about this one because it's going to be violent and bloody, I hope. But uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. The Suicide Squad looks amazing. I can't wait for that movie. Don't Breathe 2, August 13 in theaters. So, okay, this one, he's supposed to become a good guy or something from what I understand. I don't like that. Let me read, let me see if I can find anything about it. Because if he becomes a good guy in the, it's, that's just stupid. I don't know. I liked that he was a bad guy. Keep him a bad guy. Let's see here. Well, IMDb says the blind man returns to terrorize more unsuspecting people. So, I don't know, man. It's still got Stephen Lang in it. I'll give it a shot because I really, really, really loved that first movie. Even though it took a really gnarly turn, I thoroughly enjoyed that movie. I thought it was amazing. Demonic, August 20th in theaters and VOD. Let's find out what Demonic's about. I bet it's about demons. And they can't come up with a better title than that. Talk about generic titles, demonic. Come on, bro. Like, I wouldn't even want to be in that movie because it's such a dumb name. All right, demonic. A young woman unleashes terrifying demons when supernatural forces at the root of a decades-old rift between mother and daughter are ruthlessly revealed. <sighs> Again, this one I'll need a I'll need a trailer on this one. They don't get when they don't give you hardly any information. It's hard to want to know whether or not you want to watch it. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I like demonic stuff. I like things like that. I don't really care for... You know what's funny is I don't really like The Exorcist much. I haven't watched it in a long while. You know what? I'm going to shut up. Maybe I do like it. I don't even realize it. I don't know. I just think it's way, way overblown and hyped. I just don't think it's as good as everybody else does. Hell yes. Candyman. August 27th. That's... Oh, thank God. We're finally into the end of this list. My goodness. That was a long list of movies. Half an hour we've been talking probably gonna jump down to like 22 minutes worth of video footage but my goodness Candyman August 27th in theaters I can't wait for this movie it's gonna be awesome anybody else excited for Candyman I can't I can't freaking wait for that movie all right that was a lot of information Sundance coming of age horror movie we're all going to the world's fair was acquired by HBO Max and Utopia so that's gonna be a thing Let's see what this is all about. The picture here looks pretty interesting. Uh, HBO Max and Utopia have teamed to acquire Sundance Film Festival's uh, title We're All Going to the World's Fair. Um, reports deadline about the narrative feature debut of writer-director Jane Shoburn. The coming-of-age horror drama follows teenager Casey who becomes immersed in an online RPG horror game. 
wherein she begins to document the changes that may or may not be happening to her. Utopia will, will release the film in the U.S. theaters early next year and also has international rights to HBO Max's licensed U.S. streaming rights. With an original score by Alex G., the movie stars Anna Cobb and Michael Rogers alongside a number of performers appearing in various real and staged YouTube videos. That's interesting. Including Theo Anthony, Evan Santiago, and the ASMR content creator Slight Sounds as the site. Yo, so the fact that they put in here that it's got various real and staged YouTube videos, I don't know what any of this really means, but it interests me. It, it, it's That's something I'm interested in hearing more about. I'd like to know... Huh. That's cool, man. I'm, in, I'm interested in the weird shit, dude. Bring me the weird stuff. Uh, anybody familiar with Magnet? They do a lot of low-budget horror stuff. I personally really like uh, a lot of their stuff, actually. Um, they got a movie called Funhouse coming out. Um, it says C-list celebrities from around the globe compete for a five million dollar prize and die. Break the internet before it breaks you. Jason William Lee will see his Big Brother inspired horror Funhouse released in limited theaters and VOD platforms uh, this coming May through Magnet releasing, like I said earlier. In the film Down and Out, backup singer and celebrity ex-husband Casper is invited to compete in the Funhouse, an online Big Brother style reality show. To rebrand his image, and tarnished reputation, Casper reluctant, reluctantly accepts the offer. Together with seven other C-list celebrities from around the globe, he will compete for the prize of $5 million. They should do this in real life. I'm telling you, it would be awesome. At first, the fun house is just as the name suggests, full of wild times, budding friendships, love connections, and brewing rivalries. To everyone's surprise, the fun quickly turns into misery when the first challenge leaves one of the contestants brutally murdered. I mean, cool. So uh, I watched the trailer of this, and it seems like the real world mixed with host and truth or dare. Um, this one right here, I want to watch, but it could easily be a dud. But I want to watch it, so they did something right. Megan Fox stars in a thriller, Till Death, handcuffed to screen media for summer release. Till Death tells the story of Emma, who is left handcuffed to her dead husband as a part of a sickening revenge plot and must survive two hired killers on their way to finish the job. The film sounds like a unique spin on Stephen King's Gerald's Game. That's exactly what I was just thinking. Wow. Adapted for the screen by Mike Flanagan for Netflix, which left a wife handcuffed to her bed frame after her husband unexpectedly dies. Yeah, that's exactly what it sounds like. It sounds like Gerald's Game to me. Huh. I'll check this out, dude. I like Megan Fox. Uh, dude, Jennifer's Body. Awesome horror movie. Damn, this sounds cool. I'm interested in this. I'll try to wrap things up here in a few minutes for you lovely folks. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you hanging out with me tonight or today, whatever. All right, anybody out there seen the movie Raw? It's a crazy film. So apparently uh, the director of Raw has a new movie coming out. She's French. And uh, I think Raw was her first movie. So she's got a new one called Titan. At this time, plot details are so under wraps that we can't even be sure whether or not it's a horror film. But this first look image, courtesy of IndieWire, sure seems to suggest it's something of a genre project. Yeah, I would say it looks something similar to like a Saw type image, anyways. Uh, judging by this image alone, it was seen that Titan centers on a young woman in the wake of some kind of accident strapped to a medical apparatus. Expect more soon. Yo, Raw was so good that I'll go watch this based on that alone. I won't even have to watch. I, I don't need to know anything else. Just tell me, hey, it's the lady that directed Raw. I'm interested because she was awesome. That movie was amazing. That director did a fantastic job. Gravitas Ventures to release Cube-like sci-fi uh, thriller Meander this July. Yo, Cube is so good. If this thing even mimics that, I'm in. Hostile director uh, Matthew Turi is back with a new sci-fi thriller Meander in which a woman wakes up in a strange tube full of deadly traps and her only option is to keep moving forward. Alright, yeah, this very much resembles Cube. That's, dude, it sounds amazing already. After a tour of several film markets, Gravitas Ventures has acquired North American rights and will release it in limited theaters and on VOD platforms this coming July 9th, reports Deadline. The previously shared first international trailer uh, is intense and nightmarishly claustrophobic, looking like a perfect blend of cube and James Wan's nasty torture film saw cool it's colorful nasty and filled with traps not to mention creatures maybe 
Heck yeah, dude. You wake up, you wear a futuristic suit, you are stuck in an endless metal maze. Every eight minutes you need to move forward or you will die. The only reason to know why is to survive every death trap on your way. Dude, heck yeah. That looks amazing. I'm so interested in this. Dude, that looks awesome. What do you think, guys? And gals. Guys and gals. Oh, that's cool. Here we go. Eric Red teases upcoming Blu-ray release of The Hitcher. Dude, that'd be amazing. We definitely need Hitcher on Blu-ray. For real. Anybody out there collect physical media like I do? How do you feel about The Hitcher? It's a fantastic film. Dude, I was literally fixing to buy that on DVD soon. Just because I, I, I thought I had a copy of it. I don't. But Rutger Howard is one of my favorite like B-movie guys. I'm, dude, I'm psyched for this, dude. Hell yeah. Let's see what we see here. One of the great horror classics that still hasn't yet been released on Blu-ray here in the United States is 86's road movie The Hitcher. 1986, excuse me. Starring the late Rutger Hauer as a murderous hitchhiker and C. Thomas Howe as the young man who uh, makes the mistake of picking him up. Dude, hell yes, man. I would love to have this on a Region 1 Blu-ray. Doesn't give a date or anything. Still awesome, dude. I cannot wait for that. Man, I might just go buy a region 2 because I have a region free player. I I'm so glad I have that. That's one of the best things I ever bought. Saves me so much money. I buy so many region 2 Blu-rays. It saves me so much money. And headaches of having to find stuff because some stuff just isn't available over here and it's available over in Europe and you can just get it and watch it. Why not? Does anybody even care about Morbius? I'm over it, I guess, man. Jared Leto's all right. It says it's got another another release date. It's been pushed back again to January 28th of next year. All right, whatever, man. I don't even care, dude. This movie looks okay. <laughs> There's a movie coming out called Blood Punch. Oh my goodness gracious. A young man breaks out of rehab to follow a mysterious bad girl into an easy drug score. But when she lures him to an isolated cabin with her psychotic boyfriend, their simple love triangle quickly descends into a mind-blowing supernatural cycle of carnage and mayhem with no escape. Dude, it's called Blood Punch. I'm watching this. Don't even care. Willem Dafoe stars in the dark and hypnotic thriller Siberia, opening in select theaters and everywhere movies can be rented on June 18th and on Blu-ray, DVD, and digital June 22nd from Lionsgate. The keeper of a snowbound bar is pursued by sinister phantasms in this mind-blowing film written and directed by cult filmmaker Abel Ferrara, who did Bad Lieutenant. I love Willem Dafoe, so I'm watching this one just because I like that guy. Okay, so one last thing before I go. This has been a very long video. I appreciate everybody's patience and time. Uh, last week, whenever I uh, was doing the show... We came across a new movie came out called The Zombie King with Edward Furlong and uh, Corey Feldman. And uh, you guessed it, your boy picked up a copy. <laughs> Dude, look at this cover. I mean, yeah? No? Expect a review for this shortly. Uh, full disclosure, it's in my DVD player right now. I tried watching it and fell asleep. It's not exciting. <laughs> it's not terrible, but um, I don't know. The dialogue's pretty quippy and good. I I, I don't know. I, I'm gonna do a full review for it. I think eventually here in the next couple of days. But I have another movie. To, I mean, uh, I have another video I need to make for all the movies coming out in May. It needs to be dropped ASAP. So I'm going to get to work on that. But thank you so much for your time. Let me know in the comments what you think of uh, all the stuff coming out this summer. There's a lot of movies coming out. Um, anything that you're interested in seeing. Something that I may have missed. Uh, anything that I like that you think looks stupid. Anything that I thought looked stupid that you may like. Just let me know what you're thinking. So that's it for this week's show, everybody. I appreciate your time over here at Horror 31. This is Horror News Today. I'm your punk rock dad, and you're my 31 fan. Thank you so much for your time. It is sincerely appreciated. If you feel so inclined, we have merchandise and Patreon in the description, along with our social media and a mailing address if you want to send me a movie to review or something. I've had that happen before. So, um, yeah. Anyways, I love you guys. Appreciate your time. Hope you have a fantastic day. We'll see you soon with more content as I'm trying to drop it at least every other day or so here. Uh, I want to put out three to four videos a week on this channel. So, yeah. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you soon.